Hello everyone, welcome to Ripping Email Monday. Today I wanted to take a quick dive into how you can decipher and read DMARC emails and how you can interpret them using a web interface. Normally when you get a DMARC email, and I'll explain what that is in a second, it looks something ambiguous like this, report domain, your domain name, and some fingerprints. The moment you open them, you'll see they have an attachment which is zipped in a .gz. Right? It doesn't mean anything if you try to read it. It looks like this. Unreadable for most people. Now, there are also two types of emails. Some of them are aggregates, like this one. It's an aggregate report of everything that was done throughout the day, and others are individual from each sender. Now, you might be wondering, what the heck is DMARC policy? I won't get too much into the technicality, so I'll give you a brief overview. There are thousands of resources out there. I highly encourage you to go out. But I want you to think of your DMARC policy is almost like your own rule on your domain. So if anybody is trying to pretend to be you on the internet and try to send emails to people with your own domain, your DMARC policy tells the World Wide Web, hey, this person <clears throat> is not properly configured. I don't want you to accept it. So again, your policy will reside on your domain DNS. And anybody who's trying to pretend that they're sending from your domain, they have to have proper SPF DKIM in place, all right? How does that look like from your email provider of choice? This is an example of a DMARC policy. I can set it up on my own domain. It tells the World Wide Web, if anybody's trying to send emails pretending that they're richardfala.com, right, I'm gonna, I, I want you to check their setup. If their setup is okay, I want you to accept them. Now, my policy is set to none. There are a whole bunch of other different policies. But to keep it simple, you can either be very, very lenient and tell the World Wide Web, check it, report to it, but accept it anyways. Or quarantine that email because it's not going to be me. Or reject it altogether, returning an undeliverable of some sort. So these are, the, these are the three main policies that you can work with and where to receive those reports, which can be configured. Once you've set up that DMARC on your DNS, and again, there are thousands of resources out there, so don't get too caught up with this technical. How do you interpret that email that you get at the end of the day? So let's look at one of my uh, top utilized tools, MX Toolbox. They have something called the DMARC Report Analyzer. You can simply Google or go to mxtoolbox.com slash this URL here. Feel free to pause this uh, the video and zoom in on this particular uh, URL you see on top. <clears throat> now I'm go ahead and upload that report. Now once you download those reports, you can unzip them first and then upload them. So let's look real quick at a couple of them. This one is a single DMARC report. By uploading it, it's going to analyze some of the main headers. So it's telling me the IP of the sender. It's telling me the email volume one. Starting with the DMARC, it passed the compliance and it passed the authentication of the SPF. It did fail the SPF alignment. I have mine as a lenient, so probably it's a soft fail. And uh, DKIM pass and pass. I think DKIM is the most important element here because it's signature, all right? Not much to worry about here. It was sent from this IP. And by simply running this IP, I'm going to probably find out that it's a Google IP. So let's go ahead and check it. Actually, it's a Spark post. So uh, I was receiving emails from m one of our own partners, which uh, sent us an email, it passed everything except the soft fail on the SPF. Not a big deal, still deliverable. Let's look at another one, which is an aggregate from Amazon. Again, I have to download the file and then unzip it. You'll notice this one is the whole day's worth of reports. It's telling us that I have a total volume of 22 emails sent. And these are the DMARC compliance. Because I have mine set to accept all, so the DMARC compliance passed on all cases. 
The SPF authentication, all of them has passed, but there are some that have a soft fail, okay? And also there's a DKIM fail in some instances, like this one, the 190, uh, 192, the, the 234. Uh, these are uh, policy fail on the DKIM side. So these probably require some attention or some uh, looking into. If I take this and analyze it, and I always look, you know, have a reverse look up on domains and stuff. This is also using SparkPost. So there might be some domain sending through SparkPost pretending that it's us. It could be some of our testing servers that we have to look into. We haven't properly set up the sender to be to be uh, VBout with the proper DKIM signature. All right, so what does this all mean? I just don't want you to panic when you get a DMOC policy. That's one. You have to set up your DMOC policy, even if it was set to something very lenient, like I have it here, to accept all emails. But at least you're telling the World Wide Web that you have your DMOC policy in place and you're properly set up to receive emails. Everything you send out usually includes a pass or fail on Google's side. Not only Google, but every single email provider for that matter. Like you see, this policy is a pass on all fronts. So they do check on these. And if you followed me in my previous videos, you'll notice I always look at those signatures because they're really, really important for spam compliance reasons. So with that in mind, keep your SPF intact. Do check these from time to time, but don't get too bogged out into you know freaking out every time you see one. Download them, unzip them, and use a tool like MX Toolbox in order for you to read them properly and try to trace back where these emails are from, if there's anything to worry about in terms of authentication and so on. Other than that, thank you. I would love to hear your feedback. If you have any questions about DMARC policy, SPF for DKIM, feel free to drop them in the comment section and I'll happily reply. Thank you.